Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Louise Robbins, and I would like to introduce Joe Parisi, running for Dane County Executive. <clears throat> As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about your, how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for the executive position. Thank you very much. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Joe Parisi. It's an honor to serve as your county executive and have the opportunity to give back to this community that has given me so much. I was born and raised in Dane County and raised my family here as well. As county executive, I've worked hard to increase opportunity throughout our community to increase access to mental health care, both in our schools and our neighborhoods to reform the criminal justice system and to create a more equitable Dane County. I've focused on protecting our natural environment, cleaning up our lakes and increasing the county's use of clean, renewable energy. As I run for re-election, I'm honored to have the support of local leaders from across Dane County, like my campaign co-chairs, Congressman Mark Pocan and State Representative Sheila Stubbs, as well as every mayor in Dane County. These and other relationships I've built throughout our community will be critical as we move forward on the road to recovery from the pandemic. And I'm confident that as we move forward, we will do so with the recognition that as long as we're all looking out for one another, we will always have someone looking out for us. I'm looking forward to today's discussion and I would be honored to have your support on April 6th. Thanks. Thank you. Sheriff Dave Mahoney has announced his retirement. What are the primary assets you think a new sheriff should have what are the major challenges facing a new sheriff? I think it's really important that our next sheriff um, bring a wealth of experience and a view of the overall criminal justice system, very similar to the way that Sheriff Mahoney has. Sheriff Mahoney realized, and I think we need this in our next sheriff too, that the criminal justice system is made up of many parts. It's not just what's under the purview of the sheriff. And there are so many root causes to the challenges that we face in the criminal justice system. And those root causes need to be addressed. Um, we need to look at equity. We need to look at how we help people who are suffering from mental illness. We need to look at ways that we can continue to expand on diverting people from the criminal justice system. And that we can ensure people who want a second chance get that second chance. Because that's really the way we keep people safe is by addressing those root causes of the challenges that lead to people ultimately being incarcerated. Dave Mahoney is a, an incredible sheriff and I've enjoyed so much working with him and he's made a big difference in our community. So I hope we can find someone else who again is looking at who has the right experience and who is committed to addressing the root causes of what lands people in our criminal justice system. Thank you. There are several proposals to improve Dane County's criminal justice system, including a triage and restoration center for persons ex experiencing a mental health or drug crisis. What changes do you envision for our justice system and what is the county executive's role in assuring the success of any reforms? Yeah, so the triage and restoration center you mentioned is critical and I actually included money in the 2021 budget to begin the planning process to create just such a facility. You know, as I mentioned, there are so many things that go into someone landing up in the criminal justice system. Some of the initiatives that I've taken part in have been to create mental health crisis workers who are available to accompany law enforcement on calls when they think someone might be having a mental health challenge. Um, I think this triage and restoration center is a critical next step because this will allow law enforcement and others a place for people to go as an alternative to the jail to get assessed and to get diverted if possible and get the help that they need. You know, we also have to look at addressing mental health on so many other levels when it comes to, when it comes to you know, challenges that, that, that people might face. Um, one of the things that we've done also, in addition to putting mental health teams in schools and in community centers, um, as well as out on the street with, with police, um, is, is looking at ways that when someone does commit a crime, whether mental health is involved or a mental health challenge is involved or not, to divert them. Um, I've invested money in, in having diversion programs for people who um, have, have had opioid challenges so that we can help get them the help that they need. 
um, up front. I've invested in re-entry programs so that someone who has landed in jail and is going to be out has a team there ready to help them re-enter society and be successful. Um, I've invested in programs like Operation Fresh Start and expanded the county's partnerships um, with them to help young people who need a second chance get on back, get back on track. But again, it really all comes back to looking at the root causes of what lands people there in the first place. Another one of our big successes has been a countywide expansion of the community court model. I worked with um, state representatives and county supervisor, uh, Sheila Stubbs, on expanding the community courts. So what this is, if someone creates a certain type of offense, rather than going into the criminal justice system, they can come and have their case be heard by a jury of their peers, um, people from the community, if they take responsible for what happened. And this gives them a chance to really in, like, take a look inside and, and, and see what, what motivated them to commit these crimes and to maybe get the help that they need to do another path. It also helps give closure to the victim because the victim um, can choose to be part of this process if they want to move forward in that way. And that also helps the, the, the perpetrator understand the potential damage they did to the victim of the crime. And this is a much better long-term approach um, to criminal justice and is one more way we can divert people. But moving forward, we have to continue to build on the programming that we have in place focus on second chances, focus on addressing mental illness, and focus on giving people the opportunities to choose a different path. Thank you. There are many COVID-19 related challenges facing the county. What are some of those and what is the role of the county executive in meeting them? Yeah, the role of the county executive has been you know, central in our COVID response. Um, early on, we realized that COVID-19 was not only going to devastate people physically with illness, and unfortunately there have been many deaths too, but that it would devastate many of our businesses and eliminate a lot of jobs. And we've seen that from the beginning. So early on in the pandemic, I created a number of programs to try to help bridge the challenges that people are experiencing. I created what was the first in the nation local um, pandemic support grant program for local businesses. In partnership with Dane by Local, I put nearly $11 million um, toward a grant program that has resulted in thousands of small businesses, locally owned small businesses, receiving grants to help them get through the worst of the times. Now this fall and early winter, we had a really rough stretch because the federal government failed to come forward and help us with more. Fortunately, there is more help on the way, but until then, I recently put another $4 million into the Bain, Dane by Local Small Business Pandemic Support Fund. I also entered into a partnership um, with Second Harvest Food Bank. As we've seen, we've seen people who were food insecure before and people who never had to deal with food insecurity need a little help. And so I created a million dollar a month program in partnership with Second Harvest to ensure that we could supply the extra food that's needed to members of our community who need a hand but we did it in a unique way. I asked them to partner with local farmers and local CSA growers to purchase as much of the food as possible with that million dollars a month from our local growers. That way we helped growers, we helped farmers, we helped folks who live in the local community keep their businesses sustained. Because as we saw early on in the pandemic, so many of the supply chains started to break down um, from our local growers who used to sell to restaurants, et cetera. So in addition to that, um, I launched an eviction prevention fund uh, that has put over $10 million with more coming into the community to help people facing eviction. So that's just a small example of some of the supports that we've given. And moving forward, it's going to be just as critical. Fortunately, um, we have the federal government finally coming to help. So we're preparing um, how we can best utilize what dollars are made available to us to get them into the community, to help people who are facing eviction, to help businesses um, who really need a, help, a hand getting through these next couple of months before things start to open up again. So again, the position of the county executive has been and will continue to be critical as we move forward into recovery from the pandemic. Thank you. <clears throat> Dane County has been working toward environmental sustainability for several years. What, if any, additional proposals would you like to advance? 
So I'm really excited about where we are as far as protecting the environment in Dane County. And one of the things I'm most grateful for is I get to lead a county that cares deeply about protecting our nat natural environment. And this has allowed me to move forward on a number of fronts. Um, first of all, we have a very robust lakes cleanup effort underway. We have partnerships with our local farmers to reduce runoff from the fields. Um, folks might be aware of the program that we refer to as Suck the Muck that we started a few years ago, where we hydraulically dredge phosphorus laden muck from miles of rivers that feed into our lakes. And this is so critically important because it's that phosphorus that creates the algae that follows our waters. And one pound of algae, one pound of phosphorus can be responsible for up to 500 pounds of algae. So that process is ongoing and will continue for the next few years until we get all of that phosphorus laden muck out of those streams, which also helps rehabilitate the natural habitat of those streams. It's a great, it's a great byproduct of the lakes cleanup efforts. Another area that we've invested a lot of time and effort into that I'm very proud of is our efforts to reduce climate change. We decided early on that we needed to take responsibility for our contributions of greenhouse gases. Um, we, we looked at this from a couple of different angles. We worked with the university to get an assessment of how climate change will impact us locally. And this was a number of years ago. This is a half dozen years ago, at least before the floods of, few, of a few years back. And what they told us through that study was that exactly what we've seen. We're going to have warmer and wetter weather. We were going to have more flooding and more heavy rain events, and we needed to be prepared. So we've been prepared, looked at mitigation. One of the other projects that we're doing is looking at dredging in between the lakes to increase the flow of water out of those lakes so we can empty the lakes out sooner. Um, I know we're kind of nearing our, our end of our time, so I'll just end with saying right now we're in the process of releasing our climate action plan. Dane County has reached 100% in Dane County government operations um, offset of renewable energy. We have 17 solar fields, including a nine megawatt partnership at the airport. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Well, just thank you for tuning in today and thank you to the league for the opportunity to be here. You know, we've been through a lot together over the past year and we have a lot of work to do moving forward, recovering from the pandemic, providing help to our most vulnerable residents, expanding mental health services, et cetera. I'm ready to continue this journey forward and I'd be honored to have your support on April 6th. Thank you. I want to thank Joe Parisi for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.